Midwest Electric Radio presents tonight's episode, originally printed in June 1973 by National Periodical Publications, Inc. Original story by Elliot Magan. Originally edited by Julia Schwartz. Original art by Kurt Swan and Murphy Anderson. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Eureka Comic Labs. Visit them on facebook.com slash Eureka Comics for more information and check out some of their many hit titles like Mr. Nobody and Gamers vs. Zombies. Join us now for Action Comics number 424 where Superman stars in Gorilla Grodd's Grandstand Play. In deepest Africa lies Gorilla City, stronghold of a super scientific civilization. Shielded from human senses by a force field mentally created by Solovar, the gorilla chieftain whose mastery of mind power has raised his fellows from their primitive jungle existence. Because of his forays against humans on the outside world, the power-mad gorilla genius named Grodd has been imprisoned on a treadmill to keep him in a continuous state of exhaustion. It's taken me all this time since Flash put me here to collect my thoughts, formulate a master plan to escape. Uh, 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 uh. Moments later, in Chief Solovar's cabinet room. <gasps> the special alarm! The force shield concealing Gorilla City has been destroyed! <gasps> This area of Africa has been heavily settled by humans. We are sure to be discovered now. A guard rushes in. Chief Solovar, the prisoner Grot has escaped. Very unfortunate, but we have more pressing problems now. We must decide how to live peacefully with the outside world, or we're all doomed. Outside the walls of Gorilla City, guards search for the criminal Grod as he secretly watches them, concealed by the jungle's vegetation. Only by a supreme effort did I succeed in mentally diverting the power of Solovar's city shield to overload my treadmill, overcome the guards, and destroy the shield. Now to recover the mind transfer device I foresightedly hid in the jungle. But let us leave the heart of Africa for the heart of an island called Manhattan, where, at the main branch of the public library, Clark Kent and Lois Lane are on assignment for WGBS-TV. Yes, Mr. Edge. Absolutely, Mr. Edge. I understand, Mr. Edge. We are to stay here in New York. Um, hello? Hello? I finally get an assignment in New York, and with my luck, I have to spend it with Clark Kent researching a TV documentary on Easter parades. Uh, Lois, the boss just switched assignments on us, and you're not going to believe this one. Try me. Moments later, outside the New York Public Library... Reliable reports of an ultra-scientific civilization of gorillas, and their top man or gorilla named Solovar will appear and then address the United Nations shortly. Like something out of the Planet of the Apes movie. And as the two out-of-town reporters make their way to the United Nations building... Hurry, Clark. We can't let the other networks get there ahead of us. No sooner do Clark and Lois shove through the crowd in the General Assembly building than a shaggy form materializes on the stairway reserved for heads of state. Welcome, Chieftain Solovar. The Assembly will convene momentarily. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Convening the General Assembly for a talking gorilla? Maybe I should vote yet. And with little preparation and less notice, the world's diplomats and its journalists witness the most extraordinary United Nations meeting of all time. I call this special session to order and recognize Solovar, the distinguished chieftain of uh, <coughs> Gorilla City. Chieftain Solovar walks down the UN aisle toward the podium as Clark fumbles with the WGBS-TV gear. Clark, 
Move your equipment out of the aisle before Solovar gets angry. I'm trying. How was I to know he picked this aisle to walk on? And just in time. Uh, all clear, Your Honor. Your Highness. Your... Your chieftainship? Uh... Quite all right, young man. Oh, poor Clark. That gorilla is probably more civilized than he is. And as the gorilla speaks, the audience assumes a hush based more on fear than respect. Fellow citizens of Earth, through the actions of the arch-criminal Grodd, our secret city has become exposed. So I come to you for protection from other nations. Already the Congo and the Sudan have claimed that our city is within their borders. Who knows what will happen next? But even as Solovar speaks, a United Nations guard asks himself what to call another 450-pound gorilla who suddenly materializes on the street out of thin air. It's time for action around here, and Grodd knows how to make action! Before the guard could pull his gun and aim, the gorilla knocks it from his hand. Uh, sir! Grodd ignores the guards, and begins to furiously pound the ground with his enormously powerful fists, shaking the very foundation of the United Nations building. Grodd! He's that super criminal, Grodd! What do we do? Pray, man! Just pray! In the General Assembly Hall, and I hope the humans of the world will recognize that we have much to offer. The crowd panics as the building begins to crumble around them. The, the building! Shaking! Earthquake! There are no earthquakes in New York. Lois, we've got to find a safe place, quickly. How can you think of your safety at a time like this, Clark? We're reporters. We have to film this quake. As Clark and Lois are rushing out of the building to report what's happening. We must knock over this door jam like so. Hurry, Clark, or we'll miss the story! Just as Lois passes through the doorway, it collapses. Oh! The wall! Clark! Are you alright? From inside the building, Clark calls out to Lois. I'm uh, fine, Lois. I guess you better cover this alone. And as screaming people stream out of the building to see a super gorilla using the United Nations Plaza as jungle drums, familiar red and blue form streaks above the quivering Secretariat building. Oh, thank heavens! Superman! Grodd, the super gorilla, I presume. The famous man of steel, I presume. I'm honored. I really expected my nemesis, the Flash. Evidently, he couldn't make it. But will I do? Superman swoops in and slams into Grodd, but doesn't budge the ah. massive gorilla. You won't do any better. Grodd picks up Superman as easily as a rag doll. I've always maintained that Superman was overrated. Now I'll prove it to the leaders of humanity, as I'll prove it's useless for them to resist the establishment of Grodd's gorilla empire. Grodd hurls Superman into the harbor, slamming him into a docking ship. As the Man of Might reverses direction by churning around the mud and oil of the East River. Strange. That blow I gave Grodd should have left him out like a Christmas tree with a blown fuse. Those ships, beginning to capsize. As Superman tries to settle the jostled ships. All I have to do is defeat Earth's greatest hero, and all the humans will grovel at my feet. Grodd slams into Superman. Ah! I'll squeeze you to death, beauty human! Don't be so sure of that, Harry, because I'm borrowing a trick from your old enemy, the Flash, to put you into a daze with a super speed whirlpool! Superman spins around Grodd with dizzying speed. I've fought enough against super speed to neutralize a whirlpool with a stomp of my foot! Ah! Incredible. I, I feel as if some force were holding me back, keeping me from fighting my best. Then, as the whirlpool crashes down on the two combatants, and rescue teams surge into the damaged United Nations headquarters on the bank of the East River, a huge cone of spinning waters rises over the river surface. 
and a defiant challenge hurled to the world as Grodd takes Superman and throws his lifeless body onto the United Nations Plaza for the world to see. Uh. Ah! This is how I deal with Earth's greatest hero. And how I'll deal with all humans who oppose Grodd's guerrilla empire. And as one of the doctors called in for the emergency examines the man from Krypton, His heartbeat is faint. Almost non-existent. I'm afraid Superman is dying. Lois rushes to his side. No, no, I can't believe it. Surrender, humans. This is my last warning. Just then, nobody will surrender while Solovar lives. Face your master, renegade Grodd. As the astonished United Nations delegates brace for another titanic battle, the first major casualty of this day is listed. You'd better stay here, Miss Lane. We'll do all we can to make Superman comfortable. But don't hold out too much hope. Meanwhile, you have never withstood the mind force power of Solovar. As the guerrilla chieftain plunges savagely at his enemy. And you will not today, Grodd! Solovar! No! Not that! And as the United Nation delegates watch. <laughs> the fight is over almost before it begins. He's overcoming the one who defeated Superman! I didn't trust Solovar at first, but now... And as the guerrilla chief throws Grodd's unconscious body at the feet of the impressed diplomats and reporters. Let this be the fate of all who oppose peace of the world. Honorable Solovar has defeated the enemy of world peace. You will be an international hero overnight, monsieur. Lois Lane, the tenacious and headstrong reporter, can fight her tears back no longer. Stop it! All of you! Don't you realize what else has happened? S Superman! Th the finest man who ever lived is in a hospital, dying! How can you be so happy? This is the saddest day. And as Lois tries to wipe the tears from her eyes, a familiar voice speaks. Don't take it so hard, Lois. He isn't gone yet. Oh, Clark, oh, thank goodness. A at least you're all right. I've always felt close to you, Clark. But hold me. Now. And as Lois falls into the arms of the bungling reporter, Clark Kent. There were so many times I suspected you were Superman. Because I, I hoped it was true. But now he's gone. Oh. Clark. Uh, uh... But we've got a job to do, Lois. Remember? You're right, Clark. We're reporters and we have a duty to the public above all else. Just as Lois composes herself, the victorious Solovar approaches. Uh, Miss Reporter? I have an announcement to make through the news media. As Solovar begins his statement, the diplomats and reporters begin gathering round as Clark moves away unnoticed. I pledge to use all my resources to see to it that Superman gets a funeral fit for a hero of his greatness. This I pledge, and more. Stop for a moment and consider the absurdity of this situation. Superman, as Clark Kent, has just comforted Lois, who is mourning his death. She is now interviewing an intelligent gorilla who is planning his funeral. But if you notice a bespectacled figure darting into a ransacked building, you know the scene is about to get wilder. For in the next instant, a booming voice beckons from the sky. Solovar, or should I call you who you really are? Grodd. Superman swoops in, and with an incredible uppercut, sends Solovar high into the air. Superman! Darling, you're, you're alive! Obviously, Lois. And just as the massive gorilla comes hurling back to Earth, where Superman waits to catch him. Superman! You can't do that to Solovar! He has diplomatic immunity! Not from me, he hasn't. This big baboon looks like Solovar on the outside. But on the inside, he has the mind of Grodd. 
Lois moves closer to the action. That's it, Superman! Talk! Directly into this recorder! I suspected Grodd's mental powers were keeping me from hitting him as hard as I wanted to. So I took a dive, until I could figure a way to overcome it. But when Grodd offered Solovar no resistance, I knew that things were not as they seemed. The only logical explanation was that Grodd has somehow managed to take over Solovar's body. Just then, Superman catches the oversized gorilla and hurls him into a nearby building. And as the Man of Steel gathers up the two unconscious gorillas... Now if you people will excuse me a moment, I have a job to do in the heart of Africa. And with that, Superman flies away, disappearing into the clouds above. Within the hour, Solovar's doctors have switched back the two minds, and Grodd has been deposited in a specially built maximum security cell. In his last imprisonment, we kept only his body occupied. Now we have made it so he can't even think. Grodd sits there, strapped to a large metal chair, forced to constantly stare into a sophisticated electrical device that will occupy his mind forever. Grodd can never escape from his cell. I hope. As Superman flies away, carrying Solovar. We still have some unfinished business, Solovar. And you have a diplomacy job to finish at the United Nations. Soon, back in New York, Superman and Solovar work tirelessly to repair the damage the criminal Grodd had caused. Amazing! Superman is repairing the United Nations building helped by Solovar with his mind force. My people in Nairobi will never believe this. Lois, Clark, and Morgan Edge watched the exciting report from earlier that day. So Grodd's grandstand play was based on taking me by surprise. He was able to overcome me mentally by destroying Gorilla City's secrecy and making me preoccupied with a crisis. Grodd's ambition was to make himself a superhero before the United Nations and the world so he could eventually take over the Earth legally. While I was Grodd, his mind force controlled all my actions. But how did you make the Doctor think that you were dying, Superman? Simply by slowing down my heart. And as the report finishes... Great job, Lois. A superb telecast. But my question to you, Clark Kent, is where were you all this time? Well, er, someone had to finish that job on the Easter Parade assignment, Mr. Edge. What you really mean is you were scared of getting caught in another earthquake, so you bugged out. And as soon as Mr. Edge leaves the room... I'm, uh, glad the boss left us here alone, Lois. I, uh, wanted to talk to you about something. About what? I hope you meant all those things you said to me when you thought Superman was gone. And I was wondering if you'd like to- Look, look, Clark, we're friends. Just friends. There can only be one man in my life. Understand? Clark humbly accepts Lois's answer and leaves the room, closing the door behind him. Only a few steps later, Clark can't help but laugh hysterically at the irony. This concludes tonight's episode from Action Comics number 424 with Patrick Allred as Officer Daniels and Paramedic Nathanson, Jacob Arnold as Delegate Edwards, Tori L. Beckham as Delegate Bishop, Rick Busey as Delegate Petrov, Kevlin Goodner as Clark Kent and Superman, Philip Hubbard as Morgan Edge, Marshall Manley as Grodd, Jake Mitten as Guardsman Algo, Secretary General Walters, and Delegate Simmons. Tom Morton as the narrator. Justice Naeem as UN Speaker Roberts and Delegate Musambi. Josh Warren as Guardsman Kota and Delegate Moreau. Terry D. Winston as Solovar. Sarah Wood as Lois Lane. Music by Kevin McLeod. Edited and directed by Jason Mattingly with a very special thanks to Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. 
tune in next time for episode two of Midwest Electric Radio for Wonder Woman number 274, originally printed in December 1980. That's all for now. Thanks for listening.